Hey everyone, it's time to talk about notional income. Today we're diving into Chapter 34 of the CMS Decision Makers Guidance to talk about assets exceeding a prescribed value and how they affect child maintenance calculations. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more helpful content. When a non-resident parent or NRP has a legal or beneficial interest in an asset that exceeds the prescribed value, a notional income can be considered in the maintenance calculation. This is known as an assets exceeding a prescribed value variation. In this video, we'll cover the definition of assets, non-permitted assets, examples and confirm the prescribed amount, as well as give some examples. Assets exceeding a prescribed value are those where the decision maker, or DM, determines that the NRP has a significant interest. Let's break down the types of assets money, whether in cash or on deposit. However, it should be noted that CMS publications refer to assets that do not generate an income. Therefore, it can be argued that money on deposit earning interest is income generating and therefore not subject to notional income. Gold, silver or platinum bullion bars or coins virtual currencies like Bitcoin, land or property rights, shares as defined by the Companies Act 2006, stocks and unit trusts, gilt-edged securities which are bonds issued by a government, and property subject to a chosen action, which is a property right enforceable through legal action. Certain assets cannot be included in the variation process. Compensation for personal injury. Assets used in the course of the NRP's trade or business assets that could have been bought from the NRP's gross weekly income during the child maintenance case. Assets that would need to be sold to meet additional maintenance payments, causing hardship to a child of the NRP, the primary residence of the NRP or any child of the NRP. Let's delve into some real life scenarios to understand non-permitted assets better. For instance, take NRP Alex, who owns a haulage company with a fleet of trucks. The company's profit should determine Alex's actual income, not a notional income based on the truck's value. Moving on, consider PwC Maria's claim that NRP Jake possesses a gold coin collection exceeding the prescribed value. Since Jake's high income is a factor, and he can prove he could afford the coins from his income, the coins have not been bought through a diversion. The coins would only be excluded if they were purchased after the child maintenance case began. Lastly, there's NRP Ian, who owns a property where his child David resides. Changes in David's circumstances mean the property is considered for notional income only if reasonable. The NRP must have an interest in an asset exceeding £31,250 after mortgage or charge deductions. If multiple assets are held, their values aren't combined to meet the threshold. For example, NRP Alex owns land worth £20,000 and shares worth £20,000. These don't meet the £31,250 threshold individually. Meanwhile, NRP David owns 5,000 shares worth £7 each, totaling £35,000, which meets the threshold. Lastly, NRP Jake owns shares in different companies, totaling £35,000. This meets the threshold for a variation. To determine notional income from an asset, an 8% interest rate is applied. For instance, NRP Alex has assets valued at £79,750. The notional income is 8% of this value, £79,750, multiplied by 8% equals £6,380. Divide this by 365 and multiply by 7 to get the weekly income, £6,380 divided by 365 times 7 equals approximately £122.36. This amount is added to Alex's gross weekly income for the maintenance calculation. Thanks for watching. This information is based on Chapter 34 of the CMS Decision Makers Guidance. It's summarized and may therefore be missing exemptions. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more content. See you next time. Don't forget to check out our other videos on child maintenance and financial guidance. Bye for now.